All right, family. I pray that y'all are doing all right, chain breakers. So I wanted to come to you. I was going to talk about trafficking. Um, I'm going to include that in the message message next week. I'll touch on that next week, I believe. Um, so I'll do that one soon. All right. I'll tie that one into the message next week. All right. Where we talk about um, uh, narcissist abuse. All right. And domestic violence. I believe it's in the church next week. I believe it is. All right. Um, but today I wanted to talk to you about it all being a lie. Okay. Recognizing the red flags. I did a post today. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, about my community tab every day, usually every day I try to put something in there, um, just some encouragement or something to help us recover from abuse to recognize those red flags. So if you haven't checked my community tab, please do so here on YouTube. If you are new here, uh, I welcome you to the channel. All right. Um, we break the chains of narcissist abuse. So if you don't know, my name is Shannon Savoy. I am um, a, a life coach, a certified life coach, a minister of the gospel, and I help people recover from narcissist abuse. All right. I'm also a Texas uh, realtor. All right. If you need a home here. All right. So welcome to the VIPs. Um, don't forget to follow my husband, Faith-Based Workplace. Um, he typically goes live or teaches on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. And I'm typically um, live or teach on Mondays at 6 p.m. But I've been trying to recover fully um, from the flu and, you know, just the, the after effects. So I've been trying to take it easy. All right. Don't forget to hit that like button. All right. That just um, sends a message to the algorithm that um, you like what we're doing here and you want other people to view it. Okay. And then one more announcement, and then we're going to get right into this. Okay. Um, on Saturday, okay. October 26, 2004, we will be at army of God. All right. With our leaders there. Um, I believe the time is from 12 PM to 4 PM. Um, uh, there was a discrepancy about 1 PM, but I will put that in the community tab. But if you want to join us, you truly want to break the chains and you are in Houston. I really advise you to come on out. Apostle Fred and Lady Bego um, are phenomenal leaders, um, teachers. All right. Um, if you know them with Army of God, you will be blessed. So come on out, male and female. And then my husband will also speak. I believe my daughter is going to speak as well on abuse from different perspectives. So we have something truly for, for the entire family, whether you're married, you're single, whatever your situation is, I believe that's going to bless you. Okay. And then if you haven't gotten my book, um, breaking free from domestic violence, we talk about abuse from a biblical perspective on how to help you break those chains there. So head to Amazon and pick up your copy, your ebook or your book. All right. So let's talk about it was, it was all a lie you know, recognizing the red flags. And I'm not going to be before you long, right? All right. I'm really not. Okay. I'm really trying to preserve my voice and preserve my strength. It's been a very busy day as I'm sure it has been for you as well. All right. In my post, I talked about like it all being a lie and I've done several messages on it being a lie before. Um, but I wanted to hit on this today because I saw some of the comments and if you, if you gone through this, you realize like the traumatic effects, like the effects of when you fi find out that somebody isn't who they said they were, you know, whether it's, you know, your mother, your father, a brother, sister, a friend of me, um, you know, a spouse, a partner. I mean, it hits you. Right. Um, and I just remember like, like how could this be in your mind is really trying to process like, wait a minute. And it's going like so many different directions. Like, how did I miss? What did I miss? And, and a lot of times it's not that we missed it um, because of grooming and conditioning. We kind of overrode what we saw or we gaslit ourselves and you, because we've been gaslit so long. You start to gaslight yourself. Like, did I really just experience this? Did I really just you know, experiences. Did I really just go through this? Did this really, you know, just happen? And it messes you up. It, it, it plays on your subconscious. It plays on your psyche. 
Um, it can send you, you know, some people don't make it back to that place because when trauma happens, right? Some people, I mean, they really go to a place and they aren't able to come back uh, into reality. It's, it can send them into so many um, different places when you realize you were lied to, when you realize that you were bamboozled, when you realize that you were used um, and abused, when you realize that you, that you fell for the lies of a pathological liar, um, as I said in my post, um, in especially if you've been doing this for a while or you've been watching, this is why we start to watch the videos and then you get tired of watching the videos, then you don't want anything to do. You know, it's, it's, it's levels to this, right? It's levels to healing, right? And so you, you, you go down and you just try to find all you can about narcissists because it's, it's that awakening when you realize that, that something really is wrong, like what happened, you know? Um, and so you try to find everything you can on narcissists, try to find everything you can about what you're going through. And when you find out that it's narcissist abuse, when you find out there is an answer, that there is a name for what you have, you try to find out how to treat it. You know, you try to find out how to get help. You try to find out you know, ways to process what has happened to you. And so when we find out, we start the Googleation. All right. As I said, you start to find out that, wait a minute, it's a name for this. I'm not alone. I'm not crazy. I'm not the only one that experienced this. Um, I, I, um, you know, all the things, the names that you were called or whatever your situation is, you know, the, the pathological cheating, the addictions, um, you know, the name calling, uh, whatever your situation was, you realize like, wait a minute, there's a name for this. This is not normal. All the arguing, the, the sleep deprivation, um, you know, the black eyes that you may have seen, you know, put it in the comments. If you experienced any of this, you know, um, the black eyes, the, uh, rage, the wrath, the anger, the resentment, the silent treatment, you know, um, you start to put the puzzle pieces together. And when, um, when I became awakened to this, I realized that, you know, um, being married to a sociopath at the time, I realized it was like putting a gigantic puzzle piece together. And I had these few pieces and it takes a special person. All right. Um, equipped by God, right. It takes a special person to be able to care enough to put those pieces together that has the resources that has the strength because this is a battle um that has the 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 um stamina um that has the wherewithal because it really takes a toll on your body um and on your mind as you're recovering you know to to do that type of um work you know, because it is work. And then it takes you being connected to other destiny helpers to help you put those pieces together. You can't do this by yourself, but I'm getting ahead of myself, right? Um, so it really is like putting together a puzzle piece and you only have a few pieces because narcissists compartmentalize. And so while they're with you, they're one person. While they're with this other person, they're, um, they're another person. And so they're a conglomerate of everybody, um, that they come across because they're, they're chameleons. So when they're with you and you get with them and you share knowledge with them and you, you do different things with them, they really take on your persona and your likeliness and they take on your ideas and they take on your vernacular and they start talking and almost becoming a, a, a caricature of, of you and who you are why you become a shell of yourself. And so that's part of that lie, part of that exchange. You really, ex everything is an exchange. You exchange truth for a lie. Um, you exchange your spirit, your energy, your vivaciousness for, for their death, for their uh, vampirism, because that's really what it is. They're siphoning your spirit. They're siphoning your ideas your personality, everything from you is being drained to where you almost don't have the mindset to fight. And some people, they really do a number on their wheel where that person no longer has the will to fight. Um, they just succumb to the lie and, and think that this is all 
that life has to offer, but that is a lie. So at what point did you realize that it was all a lie? At what point, like what was the, the smoking gun? And a lot of times people are looking for the aha, you know, that's it. But sometimes it's just a little bit at a time. It's like a slow drip. It's like this, like, ah, oh, that doesn't make, ah, oh, this, you know, red flag, ah, oh, ah, oh, that something in the buttermilk ain't clean. It doesn't quite add up. You know what I mean? So the red flags begin to red flag and um, you begin to realize that it re really was a lie and it hits on your, it it, it affects your self-esteem in a lot of ways um, because, you know, if you, you are a successful person, a lot of times they will go after successful people. They will go off of people that they can leech from. They will go off of people that, that, um, that have a, a fighter spirit um, you know, they, they are looking for, you know, they have a, um, because they're predators, they have a certain type of prey that, um, is easier to manipulate, um, than others. Okay. So if you are intelligent, you are, and some people, you know, I've had doctors even, um, that, you know, that have followed me and therapists and, and, and people like that, you know, and, you know, even psychologists, you know, and they, it can really affect them, you know, just like any, anybody else, but it really affects you if you have all these titles and, and, you know, if you've went to school and now you realize that you got taken by a narcissist, you know, so it, so whether you're a layman or, you know, you, you do this, I say any of us can be fooled in all actuality. Um, I've seen people that say, oh yes, I can recognize a narc. Um, yeah, probably if they're co um, overt, overt narcissists, yeah, are easier to recognize. Covert, those are the ones it takes time, it takes situation, and it takes Holy Spirit discernment. It takes discernment and you listening to those to those verbal cues, you listening to, to the Holy Spirit tell you um, that something is wrong. It takes you listening to be able to discern a wolf in sheep's clothing because God says, my sheep know my voice and a stranger, they will not answer. So even if you followed a narcissist for a while, after a while, you know, if you start, if you really listen to the Holy Spirit, if you really pray and you ask him, he will show you who is who. You know, he will show you who is not who they are supposed to be, who is living double lives. He will show you through dreams. He will show you through visions. He will show you through, through you know, um, a, a number of ways when somebody, when something in the buttermilk ain't clean. All right. So how can you not recognize the red flags? Well, first of all, as I said in my post, narcissists are skilled for predators. They have been doing this for a long time. It is familiar spirits. Um, you know, we talk about it from a biblical perspective. It is um, narcissists have taken on the mindset, um, the, the psyche where they are the embodiment of Satan, all of his characteristics in, in a person in human form. I always say narcissists are the embodiment of Satan in human form, just as we are the embodiment of God here in the earth realm. We embody all the characteristics, the traits, the fruits of the spirit. Those, those are, when we are followers of Yeshua, that is what we carry. We carry the glory of God. When somebody has given themselves over to a narcissist, they embody the, um, the mindset. They have the mindset of Lucifer, of Satan. So this person has had a lifetime of being this way. They just didn't get this way when they met them. It was nothing that you could have done um, unless it's your child or something like that. But if you are in a relationship with them, it's nothing that you could have done to stop them from being who they are. All right. They are who they are. They, have, they are who they have chosen themselves to be and modeled themselves after. All right. So in order for them to get healed, they will have to repent and renounce, all right? In order for you to get healed, you have to repent and renounce, right? But they have had a lifetime of perfecting their craft, of perfecting their persona. And it is indeed witchcraft. It is emotional manipulation. It is gaslighting. It is witchcraft when you try to control another person's will, okay? And, and you, you know, you try to manipulate them and, and lie and cheat and steal and slander and do all the smear campaigning, all right? 
um, gossip, yeah, all those things. Okay. Those are forms of, of witchcraft, of emotional and psychological and spiritual witchcraft. All right. But they are chameleons. They will do whatever it takes. If it's you or them, um, it is survival of the fittest with a narcissist. Um, Self-preservation, they will do whatever they can to come out on top. And that's kill, steal, and destroy. And that is their mission. That is their assignment. So a number of factors contribute um, to being not able to being able to recognize those red flags. And I guess number, now these aren't really in any order, right? Um, but a big one is not having a relationship with God. All right. When we don't really have a relationship, when we have religion, it's hard to to discern the voice of God. It's hard to know, is this God or is this Satan? And when, you know, sometimes they can sound alike. And, you know, if, if you, you don't know the voice of God, right. And you can confuse God's voice for the, for the um, enemy's voice or confuse the enemy's voice for God's voice. But God says, my sheep know my voice and a stranger, they will not answer. So a lot of times we've grown up with religion and we didn't have that relationship with God. Right. And even if we have a relationship with God, we still have to stay in tune with him. Ask him who sent that person. A lot of times we don't do that because we're in idolatry. We're in witchcraft and we just can't recognize um, those red flags. OK, but um, the more you stay in tune with God, the more uh, the Holy Spirit will show you who is a wolf in sheep's clothing, who is a false teacher, who is a false prophet, who is a spawn of Satan. All right. And, and narcissists, um, they belong to, to Satan. They are not children of God. All right. Also, when you have unaddressed trauma and healing, all right, when you have unaddressed trauma and, um, you know, the trauma bonding, it, it'll, it'll work, you know, it will work. And this is why we're not supposed to bond over trauma. We're not supposed to do that, right? Because it creates a, a ungodly soul tie. All right. We have compassion, we have empathy, but we're not supposed to go into ungodly soul ties um, with people, right? But when you have unaddressed trauma, it will manifest. It is a spirit, it is psychological, it is all of that. And it will manifest in a number of ways, okay, to where you are blinded and you get conditioned and 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 um you 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 just don't know these things, right? So you have to address any trauma. And as I always say, coaching, becoming a doctor, becoming, um, you know, a, a coach, none of that takes the place for addressing your trauma. And I see a lot of people do that. They go into nursing fields, they go into different, you know, volunteering, all that is admirable, all that is great, but you still must do your work. You still must break, uh, address those curses, those chains and those cycles that got you in that situation in the first place. All right unprocessed and unregulated emotions. See, a narcissist does not regulate their emotions. They use other people to rec to, uh, to regulate their own emotions. So with us being empathetic, um, when we're unhealed, we just absorb, but we're really supposed to observe. We're really supposed to have compassion without letting all of that come, come on to us. Right. Um, so we must be able to recognize when we are enabling, um, when we are allowing other people to regulate uh, their emotions through us, right? We all have our cross to bear and each person must work out their soul salvation with fear and trembling. We pray, we intercede, but we cannot carry um, and feel for other people or you know, allow other people to use us as emotional test dummies, okay? So everybody... Um, part of that healing process will be processing those emotions, those uncomfortable feelings that a lot of times we've been suppressing for years and healing those soul wounds, getting to the root of, of any trauma that affected you in childhood. Because a lot of times we didn't have the tools then. And now um, when you get into a relationship with a narcissist, it actually holds up a mirror to you both. And both are unhealthy. Both are um, um, cause in order for a narcissist to reach you, you must be operating at a low level. You, you must, you're operating in the gutter. All right. And that's when Pennywise comes to get you. All right. When you're operating in the gutter, um, a gutter clown comes for you. Why? Because you're actually operating in a low state, in a childlike state, because your inner child gets stuck at that age of trauma. 
All right. Um, so you have to, you know, grow up. And part of that is healing um, those soul wounds. All right. When we have a lack of self-love, there will, there will be a narcissist waiting on you. All right. And this is a process. This is a process. All right. You have to learn to love yourself. And I told God, like, I don't know how to love myself. I, I never had that model to me. How do I love myself? Show me how to love myself. You know, show me how to see myself as you see me, God. And that will change. And I had to, that means I had to renounce everything that I came into agreement with. Um, I had to renounce sin. I had to repent and turn away from that mindset and allow God to heal and, and heal as he's doing that. This is a work in progress, right? None of us have arrived, but um, be honest with myself and, and give that to God and ask God to show me agape love not eros love, not just love, not conditional love, because that's all I ever knew was love based on conditions. But God um, showed me how to love myself as he loves. He's showing me that. All right. And it's a lot of grace. It's a lot of compassion because sometimes we have a lot of compassion uh, for um, other people, but not ourselves. Okay. So let me send this text. Oops. What's this? Uh, duty calls. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Trying to work out this contract. Okay. Uh, let me put that awaiting. There we go. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Um, and so a lot of times we, we have to be compassionate with ourselves and not just for other people. So um, it's shedding codependency. It's shedding those soul ties. Um, it's learning to love yourself and see yourself because when you don't love yourself, um, narcissists, a narcissist will be, will be waiting for you in the gutter. Okay. And you got to come up higher. You got to come up higher and heal. Okay. All right. Lack of boundaries. I didn't know boundaries. So I had to, and I've had the ladies in CBU do this, like write your boundaries out, write your non-negotiables, write how your, your, um, like your guiding principles for how you will live your life. What will you accept? What will you hold yourself accountable for? How will you allow people to treat you? How will you treat yourself? Because it really all starts with you. Everything starts with you and your relationship with God, and it goes out from there. So if you don't love you, if you don't allow God to give you that love, it will be hard for you to accept a, a, um, a godly, true love. It will be hard for you because um, that's not what you know. So your relationship with yourself, your relationship with God sets the tone for every other relationship, not the other way around. All right. Um, you, uh, a lot of times we grow up wanting other people's validation, but if you allow God to validate you and you validate you, you won't need, um, you know, the people pleasing will be, um, you know, you'll begin to recognize when you're doing that, the, the codependency, you'll be able to recognize those things because now you've set a standard for yourself. All right. Um, you set a standard and you said, I will not tolerate this. I will not tolerate this silent treatment. I will not tolerate um, someone yelling at me, um, you know, in an argument. Um, when we do that, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to, we're going to table this. Okay. Until you can calm down and talk to me in a respectable way. That's setting a boundary and that's articulating um, that boundary. Okay. So lack of boundaries, um, uh, contribute to people not being able to discern those red flags, wanting to see the good in evil. You have to be able to call a thing a thing. It is what it is. A lot of times, well, you know, I still, I'm working on this, you know, somebody will show me something and I'm like, ah, well, no, if it walk like a duck, it talk like a duck, it's Aflac. All right. It, it's not a, it's not a tree. All right. If, if it's, if it's an apple, it's not an orange. 
So we have to be able to call a thing a thing, okay? But that means that you have to be clear-minded. Um, you know, you can't be double-minded and, and, and be waning because the enemy will come in, all right? And you won't be able to see clearly. So being able to, to call a thing a thing, all right, and, and not seeing good and evil people. Yes, and we do, we do that, right? As empathetic people, we want to see the good in everybody, but sometimes, you know, people's bad overrides their good. And if you set your boundaries, you still don't have to accept certain things, whether you love that person or not. It's up to you to discern what you will or to, you know, say what you will and will not tolerate, okay? cognitive dissonance. The moment, um, you know, you become double-minded and you want to believe truth over lies, your mind, you know, a lot of times, you know, or you go through trauma, your mind can split. And so with cognitive dissonance, you're waning between two thoughts is really double-mindedness. All right. Oh, did I see this? You know, did I do this? So you have to stand firm. Once you've worked out those processes, once you've come to a realization, you got to stand on that. How I see cognitive dissonance play out the most is when somebody uh, is preparing to leave a narcissist or they've left and now, you know, the guilt sets in the, you know, the guilt trip or the, the Hoover comes in and now they're like, well, maybe. And that's when a narcissist has you because you become double-minded. All right. And all the enemy needs is a is an inch and they're going to try to take a mile and a half. And you know what happens if you return back to evil. All right. If you go through deliverance and you open that door back, that house is swept clean and it's not filled with the Holy Spirit. It's, you, you continue to be double-mindedness. The enemy is coming back with spirits seven times more wicked than the first. So whatever God shows you, you have to stand on that and not allow religious people, not allow um, people who have not walked your journey, you have to stand on what God, whatever God shows you, stand on that 10 toes down. Okay. And believe the truth over lies. So your mind can stay sane. Okay. Um, wanting an image, I'm on two more, wanting an image over healing. The moment you say enough is enough. The moment you, you come into the, the realization of what the truth is, um, when, you know, when it's no longer about the money, the cars, um, you know, making excuses, um, your life will begin to change. But if, when you say enough is enough and I want my healing more than I want image, um, listen, when the student is ready, the master will appear. You have to want your healing over everything because it is going to be a spiritual battle, um, to break free. But if you're someone who, who value, like a narcissist values image, um, you know, you care so much about what people say, uh, you care, you know, you allow people who haven't lived your life to speak into your life, the wrong people, um, you, you know, it will be much harder to break away and maintain your sanity. All right. And the last one, and, and there are, def there are definitely more, and you can definitely add these in the comment section. If you are groomed in a narcissistic family or bloodline, oh my goodness, all of these, you know, um, may apply. Um, but that's usually, you know, it's a spirit. It's a familiar spirit. It came in somewhere in the bloodline and your job is to figure out, um, you know, how that spirit, how that, you know, how you open the door to that level of evil or, um, you know, how it was introduced into your family, into your bloodline and better, and even more so important that you renounce it and you choose to do something different. You choose to break the chains. All uh, right. You choose to walk in the ways of God. You choose to do something different, even if you were groomed, even if nobody taught you. All right. You recognize, you examine the fruit and you discern the root. Okay. All right. And you see, this is why it makes it so hard for people in church um, for people, uh, in the workplaces when, when a narcissist is revealed, because a lot of time people don't defend what is right. They defend who they like. All right. They defend personality. They defend charm. They defend charm and, and, and charisma, and they value those things over what is right. So even when a leader is wrong, you have people who make excuses, who enable, who cannot call a thing a thing. Why? Because they operate in deception. 
So it, it, it just carries on into the church. If you're deceived in your personal life, if you're deceived in home, it's it's you're going to still be deceived when you go to church and, and you're going to sit in these environments that are clearly not of God. You're going to sit in Ichabod churches because why? You know, you're used to living a lie. And that's what narcissists do. They not only live a lie, they teach you to live a lie. But it's so crazy because you can't see that you're living a lie. You're bewitched because it's bewitchment. The love bombing, all of that is bewitchment. And it, and it contributes to you not understanding that this is a lie. And when those when you wake up and you come out of agreement and those scales come off, you it hits you because you realize the magnitude of the lie that you were living. And, and some people, you know, it is, it's too much, but, um, yeah, we have to get out of where we defend. We just defend personality. We defend people because we've rocked with them a long time and we aren't able to, to, um, say when they are wrong, you know, and we could be wrong too. Right. But when we wrong, when we get it wrong, we make it right. Right. That's what we do because we all can be wrong. We all can be bamboozled. We all can be fooled. All right. But when we recognize that we, uh, you know, a wolf is a wolf, we don't continue to sit under the wolf. We don't continue to enable. We shouldn't enable. There's a difference between able and, and, and helping. We don't continue to aid. That will contribute to us living a lie. Right. So as I said in my post, the truth of the matter is we can all be fooled. Even the best therapist, even the best psychologist, even the best recovery coach, even you. Some demons can only be discerned by time, situations, and discernment, by assessing and checking the fruit, all right? Because you may, you know, get into a partnership, you may get into certain situations, and as time goes on, you get a check in your spirit. Run that down. Run that down. When you get a check in your spirit, run it down. See where it's coming from. Ask God who sent them. We should ask them in that anyway, all right? But sometimes we can get it wrong. But when you get that check, address it. Don't let things slide. When you let things slide, people think they can slip and slide all over you. Don't let things slide. Address it. You know what I mean? Um, um, you know, when situations arise and we're going to have situations where we bump heads. That doesn't mean everybody's a narcissist. It doesn't mean everybody's the false teacher. There will be times where, where um, you know, things happen. All right. So not everybody's a narcissist. Not everybody's a false teacher. Um, but situations, real situations reveal real people and they also reveal false people. All right. And then it takes discernment. All right. Asking God who sent them, asking God, what does he think, um, you know, about it? And over time, he will reveal to you. Sometimes he puts it right in there. You know, when you pray that prayer, when you're dating somebody and you're like, God, is this person for me? Usually he answers those just right off the bat. I'm not even going to lie. That's one of the quickest ways to get your, ask God is the person you married to or dating, um, sent from him, man. He, he, sometimes he answered those in a New York minute. He'll put that thing right in your lap, baby girl. He'll put that thing right in your lap, brother. Won't he? Man, you ask him that, ask him that and see what, see if he won't be an on time God. See if he won't answer you quickly. See if he won't. <laughs> Test the Lord. I mean, don't test the Lord. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He will show you who is sent from him and who is sent from the devil. He sure will. All right. So, um, so yeah, those are just some of the things I just, you know, wanted to come to you about. And if you got fooled, it happens to the best of us. Regroup. You're going to find out usually when there's a narcissist in your, you know, that you've been dating, you'll find out that there's narcissists in your family. You'll find out some of your friendships were um, narcissistic. You're going to find like these pockets of people because they're everywhere. They, they really are, you know, and the goal is that you don't become what hurts you. You don't be, you don't become um, entrapped in their world. So part of breaking out of that lie is telling yourself the truth, no matter how much it hurts you. That, that's like, God, I just want to know the truth. I want to know who is for me. Even if it breaks my heart, it will save my soul. It could possibly save your soul. Even if it breaks my heart, 
even if it's not what I want to hear, even if it's not the answer, can you stand? Can you handle the truth? You can't handle the truth. Don't ask the truth if you can't handle it. But a lot of people simply cannot handle the truth. Can you handle the truth? or will you go back into the lie? All right. So, um, and if you were fooled, give yourself grace and compassion, get back up, get to the root of, of why, you know, process all those emotions. And if you need help, um, schedule a, a one-on-one, I can help you, um, by the grace of God, um, work that out. All right. Um, process, because a lot of times it's like that octopus spirit. It's like a ball and it just all gets tangled up and you need somebody, you need a Moses, you need somebody to kind of help you navigate that situation. And you don't have to do it alone. Whether you come to me, whether you come to other people, whatever it is, um, seek help. All right. It's out here. Ask God to send you your destiny help us. I'm not for everybody. I'm not for everybody, but, but by the grace of God, those who do come, they get results if they apply, um, you know, the word of God. And we're going to talk about this thing from a biblical perspective, but we're going to also, um, you know, give you practical tools and things to help you. All right. Um, but I'm definitely not for everybody. Um, but God, um, you know, he speaks through me and I'm, I'm just his vessel. That's all I am. OK. Um, but I pray this message helped you. So if you have been bamboozled, hoodwinked, led astray, you are not alone. You are in very good company. The goal is to get back up. We fall down. We get back up and we live to fight another day. All right. So um, God bless you. Don't forget to get the book. If you are in Houston, join us um, with Army of God. Um, the address and everything is uh, listed on the flyer. Check their, um, check their uh, Instagram page as well or their YouTube pages. You can check mine as well and it would give you the address and other information. If you are in the Texas area or you can get there, get there. If you know you need deliverance, if you know you want to be a part of this uh, you know, a part of this conversation, come on and join us. I believe it will bless you tremendously. If you're looking for your deliverance, looking for your healing, um, it is here by the grace of God. All right. Let me show that flyer. All right. And then get the book. All right. So God bless you. Um, if you have any recommendations, anything you want me to, to discuss, I will take it into consideration, but leave, let me know your comments. Um, how did you discern that it was all a lie? How did you feel when you realized it was a lie? And how are you doing on your healing journey? Okay. I want to know those things and if this message helped you. All right. God bless you. I will see you for those who will join us on Saturday. I will see you Saturday. And then Lord willing, I will see you back on the live stream on Monday. Let's continue to break those chains. Bye-bye.